Uh, I'm gonna take a real quick second because this is just gonna. I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna trip over it a little bit. Let me get that other. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Here we go. Awesome. Cool. 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 Well, welcome. Good morning, you guys. Glad to be here with y'all. Uh, I conquered something new the other day, so I was excited about that, and I'm I'm legit going to call my dad later. Uh, a couple reasons. One, it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, dad. Uh, second. Um, yeah, every time I, I conquer a milestone, I call him. Like uh, years ago when I, I was probably like 30, I had to call him to tell him, Dad, I figured out how to swallow pills without having to dance for five minutes. You know what I mean? Because like, I had a bit of a traumatic experience trying to swallow pills when I was young. Because he's like, just swallow it. You eat food all the time. But it's something about the brain. The pill goes in the water. You're like, oh, 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 oh. And it just all falls out. And I didn't know how to do it. Anyway, uh, enough about me. <laughs> Let's talk about Jesus. You know, w- what I thought was really cool that Jim said uh, was that, you know, he said, you know, God's blessed us with this house, and so we just want to bless people, because that that literally is their heart. They do that all the time. People are always coming over, eating, and and getting together, and all that good stuff, and and I was like, man, that that's so, that is so much like God's heart for us as well, to be like, you know, God's blessed us with something. Now, he wants us to give that in return. You know, we think of things like blessings and and prosperity as like, oh, gaining, gaining, this is for me, building up. But really, like things like prosperity has nothing to do with what you have. It has to do with what you give, right? A wealthy person, a rich person, a prosperous person is not the one who obtains and stores and stores and hoards as much as they can. It's the one who gives and gives and gives and somehow always has more to give, right? And that should be our heart as believers to want more. And I'm not just talking about more things or more resources. I'm just more of him, right? Are we satisfied in our life and our spiritual uh, connection and growth in the Lord, or do we want more? See, because what I've learned about food in, in, in the natural and in the spirit, they're like everything else with the Lord, they're opposite, right? Because in the natural, when you eat food, you get Full. There you go. There you go. You guys, I know y'all are in the room, right? So y'all can talk too. It's okay. It's okay. We're interactive here, right? So the more food you eat, you the more full you get, meaning you're like, I'm good because I, I, I've had enough. I can't do any more. But it's the opposite with the Lord. See, the more you taste and see that the Lord is good, the more you want. You don't, so sometimes you get in a place in your life like, well, I, I kind of like the idea of hungering after the things of God and wanting more. But I just don't have that, right? You're like, I don't really have this desire to read my Bible, to be, spend time in his word. I don't have this urging desire to worship, uh, you know, more than just at church or at home on my own. I don't have this desire to seek God and spend time in prayer. It, it's like a chore. And so I don't know what that is. Well, I would say that the, what the problem is is you're not eating enough. Because the more you will taste and see, the more you will step into those things, the more you will try and see the things of God, the more you will want them. The more time you spend in his word, the more you desire his word. The more time you spend in worship and in prayer, the more you will want to spend in worship and in prayer. It's just a way of the kingdom. It's how God moves, and he wants to move through us. And so that's just kind of, you know, that's all for free. Um, But I, I do have something Uh, along those lines we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to be uh, in the Gospels today. We'll start in Matthew. So if you have a Bible, you can open up to the book of Matthew. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a recap of what we're talking about, things that have just happened, right? You know, you watch your your favorite Netflix or whatever show that it's a new season, and they always start with a recap because, like, it's been a while. I forgot what just happened, right? So recap what we're about to read here is Jesus has recently found out and heard news that John the Baptist has been beheaded and been killed, right? So he hears about this. He goes away to spend some time on his own. Uh, He also has recently sent his disciples out, right? And so he sends his disciples out. He's like, I'm giving you power and authority. Go preach the kingdom, heal the sick, cast out demons. And then they go and they do it and they come back and they report and they're talking about it because they're all pumped up because wouldn't you be all pumped up if Jesus said, I've given you all the power and authority, go out in these places, do these things, and then you do it and then you do it, right? And you're like, this is awesome. I can't wait to tell the other disciples because there's no way they did as much awesome stuff as I did, right? And so that was kind of what was going on. And so, you know, they, they recently have come back. Uh, and, and now Jesus has heard this news, 
And I, I'm going to read out of a couple different, two or three, probably just a couple, bless you, uh, different passages uh, because I couldn't really de- decide what I wanted. And, and, you know, this is another side note, but you know how you can tell if someone is really into something, right? It's by if they have multiple of those things, right? So, like, if you go in my office, you'll see I have a bunch of guitars in there and computers and cameras. These are the things I'm into, right? I've learned from my wife. I've learned and, and been taught and trained uh, that just because she likes to wear eyeshadow doesn't mean that she only needs one eyeshadow at a time. That doesn't make sense to me. I'd be like, find your look for this this, this decade and just rock it, right? You know, but it is, when you're into something, you just need multiples of it, right? So I have multiples of Bibles because I'm kind of into God's Word, and so I'm using this Bible that kind of got gives us these different parallels where we can see the different stories. Um, so, sometimes you can get caught up in looking at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and think that it's like, okay, Matthew happened, and then Mark, and then Luke, and then John. It's like, no, they're different people's accounts of a lot of the same things, and so it's important. Sometimes you want to get the whole picture, read them all, so that you can kind of get the good full picture of different people's perspectives, because they all had different personalities. If you're writing a story about how amazing this sermon is today, later on, uh, it's probably going to come out a little bit different than somebody else's, depending on their perspective. And so I'll look forward to seeing those later on Facebook. Um, but Matthew 14, let's start there. Uh, so verse 13, we, we know what's happened with John the Baptist. We know what's going on. So as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. And Jesus saw the huge crowd, and as he stepped from the boat, or as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. All right, so let's stop for a moment. So what's happened? John the Baptist has been beheaded. Jesus finds out about it, and he's like, let's go. And some of the other verses, he, he tells his disciples, let's go and be, uh, let's go somewhere and, and just kind of get alone for a little bit. And there's been so much stuff going on, it says in another verse, that they didn't even have t- time to eat themselves. So like, let's just, let's just get out of here. Like, there's people coming. He's been doing ministry. He's heard this news. He's like, let's, let's get away for a bit. Let's go. And so he goes to a remote place. And then he sees the crowd. And he has compassion on them. And he heals their sick. Another uh, Another gospel also mentions that he he teaches them many things. So he's teaching them, and he's healing their sick. And, and what I think we need to realize about that is that Jesus is always in the mood for a miracle. He's always in the mood to move mightily in your life. You, you just need to take those steps towards him. If you will walk towards Jesus, if you will go where he is, if you will take steps towards him, and sometimes that looks like opening up your Bible, right? Hopefully that's how it is for some of us, right? But open up your Bible, seek him, because you know what this is? It's not a history book. It's, it's the living word. We find Jesus here in our word. He speaks to us even here through his word. It's powerful. It'll change your life. It says that we need to renew our minds by the washing of the word. It does the work. So we need to seek him in that. It may be in worship where you seek him and say, you know what, God, I'm just seeking after you right now. My eyes are fixed on you. This is what, this is what matters to me right now. I don't care who's around me. I don't care what anything else is going on. I'm going to close my eyes and worship you, God, because I just need to hear from you. Sometimes that's all you need is just to hear from him, to know that you're seen. And I'm telling you, he's always ready to move. You're not going to catch Jesus at a bad time, basically. It's, it's not like, Jesus, is this a bad time? I, uh, I'm sorry. I don't, I mean, I know you got a lot going on, Jesus, but I kind of have this need. I don't want to bother you. Bother him. Bother him. He tells you actually in his word to bother him if you want to see results. He's like, you know, say there's this woman who needed to seek justice. I don't have time to go through the entire scripture with you, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, bother, persistence. I can give you example after example, but I'm just telling you, if you'll seek the Lord, if you'll just go after him a little bit, you won't be disappointed. He will meet with you. He will move in your life. All right, let's, let's uh, jump over to John. John chapter 6. You didn't get your Bible fingers exercised this morning. Uh, John chapter 
6, we'll start in verse 5, kind of picking up in the same spot, right? So we're going to overlap a little bit here, but I want you to get the whole story. So Jesus saw this huge crowd, right, of people coming to look for him. And turning to one of his disciples, Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? And verse 6 says he was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. See, some of the other versions or some of the other gospels will say, like, you know, the, the disciples came to him. And I believe many of them did, but he also turned to Philip and said, hey, Philip, look, what are we gonna, how are we going to feed all these people? See, I've read some of these passages a lot of times, and I just felt like Jesus walked up and then was like, uh-oh, there's a problem here. I didn't think about this. There's a lot of people here been listening to me, and I, I was preaching for a long time, and I didn't realize how long I went, and we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. These people are hungry. They need to eat. And this disciple solution was like, send them out into the towns. Let them go. Close the service, Jesus. That's kind of, they're like, you've healed a bunch of people. You've preached, and people have heard, and they get it, and it's good. We're getting kind of hungry. It's going to turn into hangry soon. Let them go. But that's not how it started. It started with Jesus saying, hey, Philip, what are we going to do? How are we going to feed all these people? It's like he was creating a problem on purpose. He kind of does that in sometimes, doesn't he? Can't you look back at your life sometimes and been like, okay, Jesus, I'm in this situation right now, and you put me in it. And then I feel like you left me to figure it out. And he's like, yeah, you're catching on. And so he tells Philip, he asks him, what are we going to do? And it says that he was testing him because he already knew. And Philip replies and says, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. So he offers one solution, right? He's like, I don't, Jesus, even if we, we, we don't have the money to do that. What do you mean, how are we going to feed these people? And then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and said, well, there's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that with this huge crowd, right? So they're kind of like tiptoeing towards maybe offering some salute. They know Jesus ha is up to something. They've known him long enough to know that, like, when he asks them a question like that, there's something else coming, and they're just trying not to be the one that he rebukes, right? They're like, I'm trying not to be the one that he's just like, get behind me, right? They're like, I, I want to offer something here. And so, you know, Philip's like, even if we had all the money in the world, we couldn't do it unless you're going to make it rain money, Jesus. Is that what you're going to do? Is that what you want to do? I don't know. And then, and then uh, another comes, and he's like, well, there's this kid over here that's got a, some bread and fish, but... What's that, right? Like, how's that going to feed everyone? Because there's 5,000 men, not including the women and children. So you've got, like, a massive, massive crowd here, and he's bringing up a few loaves and a few fish. So he had a little bit of faith, right? That was him stepping out a little bit. Like, I'm going to at least acknowledge what we have, Jesus. Because in another version, he tells him, go check it out. Go see what we got. And he's like, uh, we came up with... Uh, we came, we came up with five loaves and two fish. Is that any good, Jesus? Is that when you have, like, little kids, like, real, real little, and they want to help with something, and they're like, oh, we can't buy that right now, son. I'm sorry. I can't buy that. And they're like, well, I got monies. And they hand you, like, you know, a few quarters or something. You're like, ha, 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 ha. That's, that's cute, kid. That's, that's really cute. That's nothing. You know, you're like, don't remind me of how poor we are, please, right? But, but to them, they're like, I have something, and I'm willing to give it to you. If you want it and you can do something with it, and you're like, well, I wish I could, but I haven't unlocked that key yet. But here's what happens. Every obstacle that you face in life is an opportunity for Jesus to do the impossible. He is never out of control. He is never looking at a situation and it's beyond his reach. But you do have a choice. You can choose to look at situations and say, this, th this is hopeless, or Jesus, you need to do this this way, and that's the only way it can happen. You need to send them away to go get food, or you can do your best to answer the question, what are we going to do? What do we have? Well, I got a few, a few loaves and a couple fish. Because I'm telling you right now, the thing that Jesus is asking you to do right now is most likely beyond your reach. 
And in case you're wondering, yes, Jesus is asking you to do something right now for his kingdom. If you are an unbeliever, Jesus is asking you to step out in faith and trust that he is God and that he is good. And that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's a bit beyond your just earthly flesh, like, ability, but it takes, a, it takes faith. But the Lord has given all of us a measure of faith. You have the ability to step out and believe. And if you are a believer, God has called you to higher things. He's called you to more. And when you get to that more, guess what? He's called you to more. He's a living God, a moving God. He doesn't stand still. He doesn't say, oh, look, so-and-so reached their level. They're good now. They can just coast for the rest of their life. Oh, there's something else. There's always more. And you're like, well, I don't know, Pastor. I don't, I don't feel that way. Okay, so you don't have the hunger or thirst right now. Let's just acknowledge that. It's okay. So you, you know what you need to do? You need to eat. You need to eat. You want to develop that hunger for the things of God? Feast on the things of God. And you will develop more of a hunger. It's always the things that are good for us we don't really want to do until you start doing them. Right? Like, y'all, everybody wants to kind of get healthy and exercise. You don't really want to do it until you start really, really doing it. Then you're like, I kind of want to do this. But you're never going to want to until you just start doing it. It's the same thing with God. You don't start seeking him, you're not going to have this, this crazy desire to seek him more. It's natural to pursue your sin nature. You have to die to that self to have a, a natural hunger and thirst for the things of God. But the obstacles that you face, they are probably beyond your reach. But they're not hopeless. They're an opportunity for Jesus to do something that only he can do. And we call it impossible because it's impossible for us, but with God, all things are possible, says Jesus, right? So it's not impossible for him. Like, we get caught up on big things, you know, all the impossible, the miracles. Oh, you're getting kind of, I'm just talking about I would like for, for the Lord to do the things that the Lord does. It's everyday stuff to him. He provides. It may be miraculous for us, but it's just like everyday stuff for him. He's like, well, I'm, I'm, everything's mine. I'm the provider. That's not a big deal. You need provision? I got you. That's not, that's not, that's not hard. All right, let's keep reading. We're going to jump back to Matthew. Matthew 14, verse 15, we'll start there. That evening, disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. Jesus is getting late. You've been preaching long. These people are tired. They're hungry. Let them go away. Send them away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. So he sets up the issue already because he went to be alone he went to kind of just spend some time away the crowds came and followed and he's like you know what they came so i'm going to meet with them they came here to see me i'm going to i'm going to have compassion on them i'm going to teach them and i'm going to heal them and he did so when that happens they tend to stick around <laughs> you know you start healing people like people start getting healed miraculously they're kind of like Okay, tell me more, Jesus. What else? Yeah, I kind of want to see where this is going. This is pretty crazy. This is pretty good. I wonder, maybe some of them may have been complaining. about like, hey, we want to tell some of the disciples, hey, uh, is he almost done? Like, this has been really good. I don't want to miss out. But we are getting hungry. The disciples kind of felt the pressure, too. They're like, this, this is a lot of people. What are we going to do? Just say, all right, thanks, guys. It's been great. We're out of here. And just leave? I mean, I think that would have been fine. But And they could have all left. It's not like Jesus held them at, you know, spear point. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't have, he didn't have Peter there with the sword like, no, I don't think so, buddy. Sit back down. You know, Jesus isn't done yet. I mean, they could have left if they wanted to. That happened all the time, you know. There was a time where Jesus was preaching and had many, many, many followers, and they, they didn't like what he said, and so then they all left. But they liked seeing the miracles. They liked getting healed. They're like, okay, we're cool with this. 
But so Jesus says, it isn't necessary to send them away. You feed them. Jesus wants you to feed the people. He wants you to do it. No, I don't know, Stephen. It, it, it's, Jesus does the work. Yes, he does. He does it through you. And, and this, this whole story, it's so much, it's almost like a type and shadow of what the Christian life for us today is supposed to be. Jesus was walking his disciples right through it. And he's like, okay, hey, there's an issue here. There's this problem. Look at all this stuff. What are we going to do? How are we going to feed them? I don't know. Well, what do you have? All, all we have is this. It's not enough, is it? No, it's not enough. Okay, that's fine. Come bring it to me. And you know how the story goes. He, I'm going to jump over to John 6 to read it to you. But John 6, 11 says, Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, distributed it to the people. And afterwards, he did the same with the fish. And they all ate as much as they wanted. And when the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we've been expecting. They didn't say that when he was healing them. I mean, it wasn't recorded, so it wasn't the, the big uproar. Surely this is the prophet we've been expecting. See, people, unbelievers, people far from God, people who have walked away from God, they truly see Jesus for who he is when they see his people doing the works of Jesus. They've heard Jesus. They came to see Jesus because they've heard and seen the things that he had already done. But they're still checking it out. But when the disciples began to take the loaves and the fish, and began to hand them out to the people. Jesus didn't hand anything to anyone other than his disciples. He told them, go have them sit down in groups. Go have them spread out. Give, you know, there's a lot of grass, grassy area there. He's like, just tell them to calm down, sit down. Well, what, was he, what was he doing there? He was already kind of setting the expectation. Sit, sit in small groups over here. Sit together with your family and your friends. Why? Well, we're about to eat. How are we about to eat? Well, you'll see. Jesus takes it. He blesses it. And then he's like, all right, come on, guys. And he just keeps reaching in that basket. Keeps reaching in that basket. Here you go. Go take that. Oh, we got, oh here you go, Peter. Table, table 14, Peter. Table 14. Okay. Here you go. Oh, they wanted the mahi mahi? Okay. Here me... <laughs> you go. You know? And he was just handing it out. And everyone's eating. And it says that afterwards, he tells the disciples, now go pick up what's left so there's nothing, nothing left and wasted. And they fill up 12 baskets full. There's 12 disciples. They were each used. Jesus moved through them. And they had more left over. No, it's a powerful story. And we can look at, yeah, you know, the disciples, they 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 did they did right, but I almost feel like there was even still a little bit more that Jesus kind of wanted from those disciples. They've just been on the road healing the sick casting out demons setting people free that's what that is right because here on this earth that our God created the Holy Spirit from the beginning hovered over the waters of the earth he is here Jesus ascended into heaven and said wait because I'm sending another comforter I'm sending my Holy Spirit to be with you so the Holy Spirit is here with us we don't see him with our eyes, but he, he's here in spirit. That's not a concept. He's real. He's a person. He has, he's God, God, the Holy Spirit. 
And Satan is also working on this earth. And his demonic spirits are working on this earth. I mean, it's not that, it's not rocket science. It's just the truth. And we're not afraid of that because we have a name that is above every name. We have the authority of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. So it, it's not, we don't fight, right? Our weapons are not flesh and blood, but they are mighty for pulling down of strongholds. So, I mean, we do live in a world where spiritual battles happen. If you think that the devil doesn't hate you and that he's not actively working to destroy the works of Jesus, I don't know if you really believe the Bible. We kind of have to believe all of it. But it's not that hard. His disciples saw it. They saw people that were tormented, people that were were oppressed. Jesus had compassion for them, and his disciples, they went and they did that. Can you imagine doing that? Can you imagine going off to another city without Pastor Les and going and preaching the gospel, and people are coming to accept and receive Jesus, and then you're, you're laying hands and praying, and then they're being healed, and people who are oppressed, they're having with, with all kinds of stuff, I mean, people with anxiety attacks and, and chronic pain and all kinds of just things that are not of God. And they're being set free miraculously. And then you come back home, unless it's like, hey, we got a big crowd today. Like, oh, man, it, how are we going to meet this little need that they have? How are we going to feed them? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe we should send them somewhere else. Maybe we should send her to go get food. And Jesus is like, why would you send them away to get food when we can meet the need? Why are you sending them away? Why are you telling someone to go seek some lesser thing to get their mind right when you know what the answer is? Why are you seeking someone and sending people away? We're, we're sending people away to lesser things because we're afraid to step into what Jesus has given us the power and authority to do. We, we limit the movement of God. Not because he's not able, but because he wants to do it through us, guys. You're here for a reason. He wants you to be a part of building his kingdom here until he returns. And we don't limit God when we can't imagine what he could and might do because we're human. It, it's only fair to say like that there's things that God can do and will do that sometimes it's hard for me to really fathom. But we limit God when we lose the wonder for what he's already done. had it worn off on some of the disciples already. That was really cool, right? We're all there. I remember preaching and just hundreds of people, a whole town came and just gave their life to Jesus and, and believed in him. And oh man, all these, these kids were healed and, and all these marriages were restored and all this, this turmoil and strife that just hovered over this village and this town was just gone and there was peace and there was joy. Man, it was amazing. And they come back and they're like, oh dude, there's a lot of people here. What are we going to do? Send them away. We don't have anything for them. They lost a little bit of that wonder for what God had already done. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. You feed them. Some of you have friends and family that you know they need Jesus. And you're like, man, if they would just come here less, he will preach this awesome message. Yeah. Oh, if they would just listen to this song. I want to send them this video on YouTube. And Jesus is like, that's cool, but why don't you feed them? Why don't you tell them the truth? Why don't you declare the goodness of God, the works of God? You've been given the authority. You've been given the power. Have you forgotten what I did for you? Have you forgotten what I've done through you? He wants to distribute through us. He wants to use us. 
you can't read it, but you guys should read it on your own in Psalm 78, I think. You can't read it partly because it's like 70-something verses, but they're all short, so it won't take you long. But it's going through and it's talking about the people of Israel, God's people. And it's talking about how they had forgotten the things that God had done. How they would just time and time again go back and just sin against God and just kind of just turn back to old ways. And it grieved the Lord. And I know we're talking Old Testament, but God is God, so he doesn't change. Now there's a way made for us, right? Our sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future, if we just cling to the blood, right? So it, it's there. But man, it still hurts his heart to see us just forget about the glory and the goodness of God. So I want to challenge you with this. Because church, we are the church. We are meant to do the things of God. I don't know what that looks like for you. Maybe maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you have, uh, maybe you're struggling with pain that you just haven't been able to get rid of. Maybe you're struggling with, with a sickness, an autoimmune disease. Maybe you're struggling with, with just turmoil in your family. Peace in your mind. Grief. We experience these things and they're real. We need to address them in, in all ways possible. And, but what I also know is Jesus is the answer. And how he wants to do it is however he wants to do it. He may use a little boy in his loaves and his fish, or he may rain down manna from heaven. He'll use very practical things. All I know is he wants us to take a step towards him. You've been given the power and the authority to do the things that Jesus did. To call the things that be not as though they are. Well, Stephen, my, my life looks kind of messed up. Well, okay. Let's start calling it what Jesus calls it. Let's start having some faith. Let's start seeking him for answers. And I believe he'll give it to you. Because you can't catch him at a bad time. And he's always in the mood for a miracle. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that, that you never, you never send us away. But you always have an answer for us. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would just fill this place. Speak to hearts. Show us what that next step is for us. Maybe you're here and you don't think you've truly received Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you said a prayer one day. Maybe you didn't. If you're not certain, then today is the day of salvation. Don't walk out of this room not knowing that you're forgiven, that you have new life. It's very simple. It's not magic. It's not something you do. You don't earn it. Jesus paid the price on the cross. You need to believe it and confess it. He's listening to your heart. You can pray something like this. You can say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I know that I haven't lived a perfect life. I know that I've sinned. But Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you chose to live on this earth, and you chose a sinner's death on the cross. Jesus, I believe that you paid the price for my sin. And because of your blood, I can be saved. So Jesus, I'm asking you to be my Savior, to be my God. 
and help me to follow you and to trust you and to walk towards you every day of my life. And Lord, I thank you for what you're doing today. Give us faith and courage to step out when you want us to step out. To jump in and be a part of what you're doing. Help us to feed your people. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless.